Why do、um, some groups perform better than others? This is a huge issue in academia and particularly in higher education. I'm looking here at the composite SAT scores from 1941 to 2021. So we're looking now not at SAT scores over the last year or five years, but really over more than half a century. And、um, we see some trends in these SAT scores. And、um, we see clearly a、um, kind of hierarchy of results, a hierarchy that seems to be、um, getting more、uh, firm, and the gaps、uh, seem to be getting bigger. So, for example, we see going back to the 70s and 80s that Asian Americans, for example, are doing about the same as white students.、Uh, the、uh, Asian line kind of pulls ahead. Uh, around the late 80s, but since then the gap between the Asian American students and the white students becomes pretty big. In fact, it's it's about 150 points on the out of 1600 on the SAT. Similarly, we see、uh, large gaps uh, between uh, white students and then、uh, black, Hispanic, and Native American students. We saw a slight rising trend for Hispanic and、uh, Black students, but that has、uh, tapered down in recent years, so that the gaps、uh, with between the sort of high-performing groups, and here you have Asian Americans and whites are second,、uh, the gaps between them and then the Black, Hispanic, and Native American is quite large. In fact, to to look、uh, compare the top to the bottom. Uh, the the score, for example, for blacks is under 950, and for Asian Americans, it's over 1,200. That's a, just a huge, a huge difference. Now,、um, there's been a lot of anxiety over the cause of this, and of course, there are a lot of people who are really frightened that it could be that you have genetic,、uh, uh, natural, biological differences between races, and that's the reason for this result. Let's remember that the SAT used to be called a scholastic aptitude test. Now they got kind of scared of that、uh, name, and they changed it to a scholastic assessment test. These days, just the SAT. But the word aptitude means basically your innate ability. What is your aptitude for music? Well, that means how musical are you by innate disposition.、Uh, what is your aptitude for、um, running or basketball? Well, that means you have a kind of athletic ability to、um, to play those types of sports.、Um, so while the racial theory is has been around now since the 1970s. You might know the name Arthur Jensen. He was a Harvard psychologist who was a strong defender of the idea that differences in、uh, academic performance,、um, he, he argued, are the result of differences in IQ. And IQ, he said, has a, a considerable innate component. Not that IQ was 100% genetic, but IQ was largely genetic. Now. I've never really agreed with this, uh, and yet, um, and yet, um, I've read these studies with interest to see what it is that they're able to show. It's hard to deny that there is such a thing as as aptitude, at least in certain things.、Um, for example, I am good in certain types of things、uh, academically. I'm not good in others. And、uh, in the things that I'm good at, it's true. I I work hard and I develop my abilities, but I develop my in- abilities in part because I have those abilities. Whereas in other areas, even though I seem to work hard, I'm like, wow, this is really just not my area. I'm just not that interested, or I don't really get it.、Uh, and so clearly, in those areas, I have a diminished、uh, aptitude, less aptitude than other people. Now. There have been some very interesting studies that look not at innate aptitude, but look at effort. And I'm looking here particularly at a new study that that、uh, by the, by the Brookings Institution that focuses on homework time. So take a look at this. We're looking now at the time high school students spend on homework,、um, essentially divided by race, and we find that、um, uh, we're looking at minutes per day. 
So, so black students devote ho for homework about 20, uh, 30 minutes a day, no more than that. Hispanics, about 42 minutes a day. White students, about 55 minutes a day. And Asian Americans, 110 minutes a day. Wow. Now, isn't it obvious that huge differences like this in the amount of effort that you put in are going to have an impact in how you perform? And by the way, these differences do not change even when you look at socioeconomic status. Another way to put it is Asian American students from poor families do better on math tests than black Americans who come from upper middle class families. This may seem kind of shocking because we think somehow that this is all a matter of class or income. And by and large, if you sort for, for income, that differences between ethnic groups will go away. They do not go away. But I'm saying that they do not go away not because there are some biological differences between groups, but because there are differences of culture, of behavior, of effort. And as we can see from this latest study, study habits.